Hello and welcome to Photographic Connections, the podcast where we create connection to self, nature and others through the art of photography. My name is Kim Grant, the founder of Photographic Connections and your host for this podcast. And today I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Susie Beeler onto the podcast. Susie is an American photographer who specialises in mindful photography. We speak about what mindful photography is, how it's helped her in her own personal journey and how she's gone on to help others with their mental health issues using mindful photography as a tool to connect them with both themselves and nature. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Susie Beeler. Hi Susie, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast this week. Before we begin, I have to say a huge thank you to Kimberly for introducing us because without her, we wouldn't be chatting right now. And uh, so thank you, Kimberly. She's one of our, our listeners. And uh, I'm really looking forward to speaking to you today because I feel like this chat is going to go into places that I've not really done with, with guests before. We're going to delve quite deeply into mindful photography and the benefits that that can bring people. But before we do that, I wondered if you could go way back to the beginning of your personal photography journey and explain what got you into photography in the first place. Oh, absolutely. Such a love. Well, I grew up one of nine kids and I was literally shadowing my father because he did all the slides back in the day, Kodachrome, of course. And he would give me his camera when he realized I was so interested. So I'd start shooting. And that was always fun. So my first orientation into photography was family, family slides. And then he brought home a colleague that worked for a camera store part-time, and he gave me my first camera around 13 and helped me set up a darkroom. And I, you know, from there I went into school. I worked on the newspaper in high school, junior high. I went to college, majored in journalism photography, and it was always part of my life. Yes. And it's very clear that you've got a very, very deep connection with photography because while you've kind of been off doing various different things throughout your your journey, as you rightly say there, photography has always been there in the background for you. And I guess where did your connection with mindful photography specifically come into, into play? Probably it was many years later and I was kind of in between. I was doing my PR biz and I've, I would always take um, workshops or go to conferences or whatever for uh, photography. And I took a, at a Buddhist center, I took a contemplative photography class. And, oh my gosh, I had no idea that this was something that I had always done. Um, Andy Carr and Michael Wood wrote the book. And basically what they had us do was stand in each direction and just observe and look. Where are the pops of color? Are there shadows? Is there pattern somewhere? And all of a sudden it was like, oh my God, this is this has put a name to what I've always, you know, believed in. And then jump space again many years later when I was offered, um, when I connected with San Francisco General uh, mental rehab center to teach a therapeutic photography class. And I asked if we could call it mindful photography class. And then that catapulted me even further into, uh, what I consider an art, a practice of how I photograph. Mm. It's beautiful that you went to, to this, um, you know, almost course there and did the, the contemplative uh, photography and you could see within yourself that, that had always been within you. It's it's like I find a lot of photographers that their journey is very, very different, very unique, but there's also a lot of kind of similarities. But what I love when speaking to many people who are very deeply felt into their their imagery and, and the art of photography is this idea of almost the emotional connection, the stepping back, the the really observing. And it seems like from you, from a very early on in, in your photography life, this stepping back and observing was was always there for you. Is is that is that what I right in saying that? I believe it was intuitively. I didn't have the words for it or the awareness. I think it took me getting out of Texas and, to, and moving to California 
and being so much around the ocean, um, doing a whole bunch of uh, retreats and yoga and, you know, just spiritual uh, paths led me down a deeper uh, look at myself and how that, how I could apply that to photography. And I just did it, you know, one, one foot in front of the next. Um, I believe that we all are capable. You don't even have to be a photographer. I mean, everybody's a photographer these days with the technology through, through phones. However, I think just applying a meditative art to how we approach what's before us so that we're, we're basically seeing and not looking. I love we're that. Observing. I'm observing. We're observing. Yes. Yes, I love that. I made a video on YouTube a few weeks ago kind of saying, are you a looker or are you a seer? Because I find there's a lot of people that go out and they merely look and then they'll, you know, create their images. Whereas when we actually step back and really see what's going on around us, you begin to see so much that isn't clear to us initially. And you start seeing all these intricate details of the beauty of, of nature. And then when we can connect with that through photography, it's such an in, incredible experience. So I guess from your experience, how do you find this, this, this um, process of photography, of seeing? How, what do you feel it does for you personally? Because you've, of course, gone on and helped many other people in their own journeys. But how did you realize within yourself that it was really helping you? Well, by slowing down, I always meditated. Uh, I hadn't really connected it directly to photography. But by slowing down and realizing, oh, my God, I have this wellspring inside of me. And how can I bring that expansiveness to what I do in, through photography? I remember going to a <laughs> tea leaf reader <laughs> in San Francisco. And I had been, what I thought, depressed off and on. And um, I sat down with her and she goes, sip your tea. So I sipped my tea and then she looked at the leaves and, and she said, it's not depression. She said, you just have to get out to the ocean and feel the expansiveness. And I was like, oh my God. And I had been contemplating moving to the coast because my sister had been newly divorced with her two kids there. And I always go to the coast. Believe it or not, about a year later, I was at the coast, living across from the ocean in a cottage. And the sea was just like, oh my God, such a reflection of what's inside of me and how I could be something bigger and bring that forward. Wow. I, I was going to ask you actually about your connection with the coast, because we all seem to be drawn to slightly different things in nature. You know, a lot of people find much solace and connection in woodlands. Some people love being up mountains and having that almost bird's eye perspective. But for you, it's it's the coast, it's the sea, it's the ocean. And you mentioned there the expansiveness. So I'm guessing what kind of feelings come up for you when you're by the coast? And then how do you then use your camera as a means of really immersing and connecting yourself? yourself with that? I think it's about being with a body of water, which they say is feminine. Um, and this just feeling that I'm home, that I'm not alone, that we're in this together. I remember going to Jenner Beach with a, with a dear friend and I was just shooting the waves, going out so far that I wished I'd had a rope around me and given it to my friend so she could keep pulling me back in so I wouldn't go out into the ocean with my camera. And a little, a little boy came by and he said, excuse me, ma'am, I see you're taking lots of wave shots. And I went, yes. He said, well, I have a great place. Would you like me to show it to you? I said, sure. So I, I followed him and we went over all these stones and rocks and I'm like, Oh, goodness. And I said, is it, is it very far? You know, I didn't want to trip. And he said, excuse me, ma'am, but my grandfather made it across her. I'm sure you can. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I kept walking, finally got to a spot, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And I started shooting. And then I turned around to thank him, and he was gone. <gasps> and I was like, oh, my God, my angel. Wow. And it was so heartwarming. And that's two of my favorite images I call splash and luminosity. It's a, 
a, I've done a diptych of them on my website, and I just it it it's calming and it's inspiring and it kind of stirs me up whenever I look at it as I do the ocean. That's phenomenal. You, you clearly have such a deep connection with life, with nature, with the photography, with learning about you. yourself. And I, I'm finding that in my own journey. I'm doing a lot of the last sort of two years, I've been on a massive um, journey of self-discovery and kind of dipping into a lot of the things that, that you're mentioning here. And it's totally transforming my photography in, in so many ways. And I love there that you spoke about when you're at the coast, it's like coming home. And I spoke to a seascape photographer, quite an acclaimed seascape photographer called Rachel Talabar here in the UK a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and she spoke about when she's at the coast it's like this feeling of belonging you know you're photographing somewhere that you belong yes. it's such a beautiful and, and divine feeling and you can really see uh, there when you're speaking about it this mindful approach and this mindful connection so for anybody listening here that's not really familiar with mindful photography it's you know mindfulness is becoming quite a, a well-used word now but what, what would your definition be if people were wanting to understand what is mindful photography? I think I would say it's a meditative approach to photography. Um, it's above all, it's being present in the moment. It's kind of, if you can, turn off, turn off your brain and tap deep into your heart. Um, and what I just um, had mentioned, stand in one direction and just observe and just see what comes up. When I teach students, we talk about the different elements of photography, which I know you know well, but you know, shapes, patterns, textures, the overall composition, um, and just observe where those come into play. And don't, don't click away yet, just observe. And I think, I believe that mindfulness in, in itself can help reduce you know, your unrestlessness and add photography to it so it's mirroring the different parts of you. I had one center that wanted me to come and work with uh, students in rehab, and she said, do you think that we could have them take photographs of how they feel? You know, if they're in a dark spot, what are you going to photograph? Maybe the really dark edges of bark on a tree. You know, and the reflection can give us almost like a roadmap. Oh, this is where I am. Where do I want to be? Maybe I want to go up and shoot parts of the sky. I love to do clouding. Do you know what clouding is? No, but I'm guessing you're <laughs> looking up at the sky, are you, and connecting with it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you're laying down on the grass or wherever and just looking up. And... The trees, the sky, the sun, maybe it's just a blank sky, which to me, I love blank. Blank is a beginning, blank is the end. Blank holds so much. It's, um, there's, there's so many simple things you can do with that. And, you know, it's a known fact now because there's been so much written about mindfulness and specifically mindful photography that it can reduce depression calm stress, uh, ease your anxiety. And if I know that I can be a messenger of just helping eliminate a little bit of that suffering, ah, oh, then I'm serving, I'm on purpose. And that feels really wow. good. Oh my gosh. My heart is filling with so much love and joy right now. You're totally on like the same wavelength as me. I just, I feel like within me, there's this, this real calling right now to really help humanity. So my background was in nursing. When I left school, I trained to be a nurse and I was uh, qualified for three years, but I kept having this really need to be outdoors and be creative. And I found the nursing world incredibly restrictive, stressful. It just, it didn't work with my creativity. Um, and through my own mental health issues and physical health issues, I kind of realized it wasn't a safe environment for me to be in uh, from a growth and development perspective. And when I started carving a life for myself, which was more in line with my creativity and my photography and my self-expression, it's almost like I'm getting to the stage now where I really want to be able to help people through the art of photography and bringing in kind of my knowledge from my medicine days and then nursing and, and also everything else that I've kind of learned on my own journey. And 
I love how you've been able to do that and you've gone on to work in, in this rehab centre delivering mindful photography to people. So how did that come about for you? Because that's an incredible thing, I think, to be able to, to get involved with. Well, I was still doing my public relations career. And on the side, like I said, I mentioned to you that I would pick up extra photo gigs or, you know, retreats or whatever. Well, I answered an ad on Indeed, which is like a Craigslist. And they were looking for a mental, um, a therapeutic photographer. So they said that you could attribute uh, mental health experience in addition to your own photography experience. But they wanted you to have some uh, experience in the mental health field. Well, I've been a friendship line volunteer for seven years, excuse me. <clears throat> and what friendship line is a warm line as opposed to a hot line where, um, we take calls. Kim, are you there? Yes. Okay. We take calls, uh, and we give, we do calls to seniors and practice active listening skills. And we also talk, talk with mentally and uh, physically challenged individuals. And it's just a beautiful line. And we've been able to reach out and help many people that are alone or suffering. And so I equated that to experience. So that helped me get in the door. Well, we bonded, the activities director and I. And uh, the students were came from all sorts of backgrounds, economically impoverished, um, many spent years in and out of hospitals and jails. And I would um, craft the class and teach the different elements of photography, but the first thing I'd do is start with a, a meditation. I rang my bells and we sat in silence for a couple of minutes just to kind of set the stage. And then the camera had little point and shoots, which had a memory card. So we'd pass those out. And I'd say, just be with the camera. Touch it. Feel it. You can look through the viewfinder, but don't, don't take any photos. And it was essentially to impress upon them the respect we have to give to this amazing tool that's allowing us to, to see the world through it. And so we became familiar with the camera. And then I'd talk about you know, shadow and light, maybe that was the first, you know, because it's all about light, right? And another session, I'd talk about patterns. Well, then we'd go out to the garden and we'd take photographs. But before we did that, we'd stand in a circle and just observe in each direction. And then they would take half a dozen photos. We'd come back and talk about the experience. Then I would take the memory cards, select the two top ones from each student, come back. And the hospital would have printed those. And then I'd ask each student to title them and to tell me about that experience of taking that photograph. And it was so wonderful to see the students just so excited about what they did. And one student kept shooting the chain link fence that surrounded the garden and the sky. And I said, tell me what that means. And he said, one day I'll be free. And I thought, oh my God, that is so beautiful. What a beautiful reflection. And sure enough, the last class, he didn't show up. But I saw him in the hall. And I said, where are you going? It's our last class. He goes, oh, I'll be at the gallery opening, but I'm out. They found a home for me. Oh. So it kind of circled back. It was just so heartwarming and beautiful to know that it, it had an effect on him. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And at the end of the at the end of the three month project, we had a show and I, you know, curated it. And everyone got up and talked about how they shot that image. And it was just beautiful. Just so and it was hospital staff mainly, but it was overwhelmingly successful and you could really see their their values increase just by going wow. through that that's so beautiful you know that there's so much research has been done to show you know creativity when you know we're struggling being able to have an outlet for our emotions and our feelings and everything and the 
positive benefits that can have on us. But I kind of find often in, in the Western medicine world that it's not always recognized. And I know here in, in the UK, we, we, we do have art therapy and stuff like that. But I guess when people think about therapy, they often think about the traditional sitting down with a counsellor and speaking kind of one-to-one or, you know, the group therapy of sharing. But this art therapy and this photography, especially, you know, seeing through a lens, seeing the world, expressing what you're seeing, sharing that in a, in a safe, space like that you can really hear there in in what you're saying the the positive benefits that that had on people and I think it's so beautiful that you're speaking about this because I I I would love to see stuff like this being implemented in more places because not everybody you know we're all different and I think there's so many people now like you say that photography is accessible to everybody and there's so many ways that we can use it from a, from a therapeutic standpoint. And you did mention in, in your email that, you know, there was always a therapist present when you were doing this as yes. well. So it's it was a very safe space, wasn't it? It, it absolutely was. And there were times when a student um, might have been, had to, I don't know, not been feeling well from all the drugs he was taking or something, you know, and... And so the therapist would work with him and maybe escort him out or her out and just see, you know, not to disrupt the class. Um, but I appreciated the therapist there because the ultimate goal was to have them reflect back their own inner process of working with the camera and what they took and you know the the flowers in the garden were beautiful so some of the images were just stunning of of uh, different colors and just really radiating their inner presence Mm -hmm. which i just loved and i could just expand on that with them and um it was a very gratifying experience for all of us Oh, it's so beautiful. It must have been so lovely for you to facilitate something like that as well and, and be involved with that. And I guess, you know, what what would you say really is your vision for the future? Because I know that you see it kind of now as your life's almost purpose and service to to bring mindful photography out there and, and vocalise it more. So kind of if you could visualise what photography will be like in the future and what it can do for us, what, what would be your, your ultimate dream? Oh, goodness, you mean in a global <laughs> sense, huh? Ooh. Or, well, or I, smaller. <laughs> well, I would, you know, it's funny. I, I, I realized you were a nurse and I listened to your beautiful uh, introductory uh, podcast to hear your story and what you went through. And a couple of years ago, before the pandemic, I have a nurse educator friend that actually was able to get mindful photography accredited. You know how nurses go off and take... Uh, courses all over the world. I'm sure you're aware of that. And so she was going to uh, take them to India. So she worked me into their um, course. And I was going to, you know, help teach the nurses how to, to apply mindful photography and a greater sense of mindfulness. And then the pandemic hit. So it was delayed. So we haven't gone yet. But the thought that just hearing your own struggles with nursing if we could apply it to a field like that to help calm the suffering that these incredible healers go through, wow, how tremendous would that be? I mean, it's a, it's a proven fact that there's, I think I, uh, our latest research was that there's only th- over 300 million afflicted worldwide by depression. And depression can have many labels, you know, and I think that if people realize that a simple phone with a camera can help calm them, I think in general it probably does because people are intrigued. Oh, my God, I put this up, and each, each new phone comes out with so many new bells and whistles. But just to know that there's, there's a friend right there on the other end of your eye that's um, showing you ways that you can just maybe find some joy, you know, zero in closer to that flower that's about to bloom. You know, I have a favorite image that I've, I've renamed becoming that's a bloom. And I realize we're always becoming. 
And if we can be more in tune with that internally and be okay with that, maybe that can eliminate some of the self-doubts. I think the greatest need we have, and I'm including myself in this, is self-compassion. You know, taking the time just to be with us and know, hey, you know what? We're okay. I made a mistake, so what? You know, I can remember one year in my life I wrote all over the wall, so what, so what, so what? <laughs> so I could just be okay with who I was. Wow. Oh. Um, yeah. Wow. It's, it is definitely, it gives you that kind of self, yeah, self-acceptance stepping back. And it's interesting just hearing you speak there about, about everything you've just shared. Cause, um, I recently made a video where I, I was speaking about the life changing power of photography, you know, everything it can do for, for us from a, a self-expression perspective, a connection ex- perspective. It also brings us together with, with like-minded people. It gives us an outlet to tell a story. It, it does so much for us. And the amount of comments I got in response to that of people sharing these really heartfelt stories about what photography has done from for them i think it's just it's becoming so much more recognized i think as as a as a tool to do that because i guess you know i kind of feel like for so many years it's been almost um plagued with a lot of the technicalities and there's been a lot of like the competition driven side of photography and all that kind of stuff and i love that something like photography is more and more becoming seen as like an art form i mean it always has been in certain places but i feel like it's more and more being seen as an art form and a a, 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 a way of expressing ourselves and a way of, of connecting and i think you you kind of say that one of your joys is opening the hearts and minds of people And I guess if there's anybody listening to this who maybe struggles with this concept of opening their heart and connecting, (laughs) is there any advice that you maybe have for them? Because I think people maybe that are a bit kind of of rational and kind of in their head can sometimes struggle to get into the body and and feel and and see in that kind of feeling way. So what would your kind of advice be for for them? Yeah, it's it's like slow down. I, I met with a buddy friend who I just love and he's he won't retire. He's in his 80s. I can't retire. I said, okay, well, maybe there'd be more time for you. Maybe consider having a little self-compassion. Oh, I don't have self-compassion. I mean, it was just a quick response. I don't have self-compassion. So for anyone, I would say, just go out in nature and be quiet. Be silent. Sit on a park bench and just close your eyes and just listen to everything around you and and then open your eyes and observe and see what's around you and know that oh wait i'm not alone i have a camera i can raise my phone i can take a photo i was in the, at the park yesterday and i was walking and i walked into this deep area of trees and and then I backed up a little bit I realized oh, there's a portal because there were tree branches just making a frame and I just love that I love portals to me portals are opportunities like oh there's a doorway open that's an invitation you know once you start training your eye on the different elements oh my god the whole world opens up because all of a sudden, I mean, I, I walk down the street and I see patterns and I see shadows and, and I have to be, almost have a greater self-discipline not to just take the camera and raise it and start shooting. I mean, I grew up on Tri-X 400, black and white, not black body, not chromatic, you know, and the old time photographers would shoot rolls and rolls and rolls of films. Well, digital, because you can see it right after you take it, it's like, oh, wow. Well, that's not bad. I'll shoot a couple more. I would say shoot at least two um, because things always change before you. But um, it's, it's not rocket science. It's a simple art, but we all have art inside us. And I think just being patient with yourself and holding your heart Put your hands to your heart if you're ever unknowing, if you ever feel lost. That brings me immediate relief, hands to heart. Look up at the sky. 
I almost feel like we're we're trying to relearn our innate wisdom. I feel like we live in this world that's um I guess is constantly trying to rationalize things and and whatnot. And I feel like what we're kind of going back to and maybe what we're trying to to really showcase in our work is just getting back to our our innate self, that slowing down, that connection with nature, that noticing things, that feeling. And I guess there's there's many people in society who are so far removed from that. It takes a lot of time to get back to it. And I I guess maybe on your journey as well, have you kind of found that it's taking you many years to retrain or or get yourself back to that state? It's like, I sometimes speak about this and I I don't want people to think it's like an instant overnight thing. We go out and we connect and that's it. it. It takes time, doesn't it? And understanding yourself and when you listen to your story, you know, you've obviously been to a lot of, of like retreats and workshops and a lot of self-development on yourself, which has now led you to get to the place that you are today. Yes, I've been very fortunate. I, in school, uh, I minored in photography and I had one instructor that if he didn't like a print, he'd sling it across the room. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And I, you know, he had all these credentials and everything and I learned a lot. I learned a lot. However... I, I dropped his class and took a, a body, body movement photography class, and he was so insulted. But in this class, the instructor helped us realize how, how we can look so closed uh, through our bodies, you know, with our hands across our chest or, you know, the way our frowning is or, you know. And I, I remember shooting a picture of my boyfriend at the time, and he was hunched over. And the instructor said, he walks defeated. <laughs> and yeah, it's like, hmm. I think if we decide, if we set an intention and are willing to put in the time and effort, and like I said, train your eye. It, you might be amazed that the training doesn't have to be, oh, my God, it's schooling. I can't do that. It's more about, well, for me, it's so intuitive. You know, even in my, my PR world, I never took a PR class in my life. It was just, you know, I put one foot in front of the other, and all of a sudden I landed, and I just helped my clients hold to their vision. And I learned early on through a consciousness class when I was struggling with what is my mission? What is my goal? What is my, what am I supposed to do? What is my purpose? And the instructor said, Susie, all you have to remember is that your vision is to serve. And I thought, oh my God, that's all I have to, well, that's easy. (laughs) Because I do feel like I serve every day. You know, I served in PR, you know, helping with their relationships and just holding them to their vision. And I serve. It's so easy to be kind. And I think that's just, as we age, and I consider myself a modern elder, we, you know, move greater into service. And it's so rewarding. It's not, we, we kind of, drop down, oh, you have to do, do, do. Well, how about dropping that down now and incorporating and integrating service to yourself first and then extend that out? See the reflection. It can be very powerful. Yes, yeah. they say that, don't they? That our outer reality is a reflection of our internal world, and it's you know. And again, we how can we love another until we learn to love ourselves? And I used to really struggle with those sort of sayings or, or those um, you know things that we now realise are very true. But they they are they're they're very true. And I think once we step into that, we begin to to realise it. And yeah, it, it's interesting because I think. I'd love to see in the photography world more of of this becoming a thing of being of service to people. And of course, for many years, there's been workshops and tours and and the teaching of the technicalities of photography and things which all have completely have their place and are all part of the journey. But I love what you're doing. And I think we might maybe we'll see more people doing that in the future because the kind of commercial world of photography is is, you know, dying in many respects you know with photography becoming so um you know done so much but actually this sort of work and what you're you're doing and and sharing is something that we need everywhere and if people have the right 
maybe um, mannerisms the right kind of work done on themselves to be able to facilitate that you know we could so much can be created in the photography world to, to be of service to others and and to to really help people that that really need it and give them a a tool and a medium to to connect both with themselves and and the natural world absolutely absolutely and i mean it's you know the benefits of mindful photography and the to do's and all of that. Just Google it. You know it's everywhere. Um, we're we're fortunate that that we have the web that we can just reach out so easily. And there's a number of great books. One just came out again on mindful photography. Um, and it all to me the thread is <sighs> observing. And just being with yourself and bringing that forward. And you might be surprised that you're tapping into a new, a new part of you when you give yourself time to see what's there. And then visually, um, it's just a gift. I mean, I walked down the street yesterday. I was walking down the street and the light was so beautiful. And I, I'm just... I, I shoot so many shadow shots, but now I've begun looking deeper and in, into the shadows. And I looked up and I saw this beautiful window and there was a dress hanging and it wasn't blowing out of the window, but it was hanging in the window. And so I caught that and I called it summer dress. But I love that because it reflected how I felt because it was such a warm, beautiful day and... There it was, a, 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 just a, a moment of joy that warmed my heart. And I've noticed in, in my work, when I put that feeling, how, how am I feeling in that moment? When I put that into my imagery, the images speak volumes. You know, for, for years, I've kind of gone down this route of doing what we're told makes a good image. You know, talking about the you know, compositional techniques, certain settings, and almost finding myself going down this route of, of not being true to myself because it's apparently not the way to do photography. But when I drop into my heart and drop into my emotions and think, how am I feeling right now? And what am I naturally feeling drawn to? And then I go into create an image from there. The impact it has both on me and on everybody that I end up sharing it with, um, you know, after I've created it and put it out there, people just connect with it on such a deeper level. Because I guess from an energetic perspective, it's like you've you've really embodied that experience, you've really embodied that moment. And I think that's something I'm trying to kind of speak about a lot more now is when you put that feeling, that emotion, that connection to your images, it doesn't just give you a release and a connection, but everybody that looks at your image or most people that look at your image or, or feel something that wouldn't be there if you didn't create it from a place of, of a place from the heart, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it can be very healing. At one time I wanted to name my website, the healing art of photography, whatever, I don't know, but a, an experienced cu curator friend told me, Oh, Susie, all art is healing. And it's so true. Even dark art is healing. You know, it's like it's reflective. And that's what we wanted to get the students at the hospital. You know, if you're having a bad day, well, then what would reflect that? You know, if it's just, you know, darkness on a sidewalk, you know, um, yeah. It's amazing how science can come through everywhere. Mm, 100%. And really I think what beautiful. I love and what I love from listening to you is that you just literally walk out your door, walk down the street and you're connecting with with everything. It's like photography and mindfulness has helped you to have a much deeper connection with the world, which is so beautiful to hear. Absolutely. And you know, we have more and more loss. I mean, Grief, grief is, grief is a learning process because it's not only gr grief of loved ones and friends and pets, and, but it's grief of our natural resources, you know. And to learn to work with grief and look for doorways in it and to be with it and not skirt around it and how photography can play a part in that no matter what. I mean, I remember I met a 
another photographer at a conference, and she had these tremendous migraine headaches. And she decided to do a short book when she was suffering a migraine headache. And the images were just unbelievable. But it was all about when she was in pain. And at the end of the story, she ended up finding uh, a temporary cure. I'm not quite sure how it played out, but the book was just really about her suffering. And I think we have to honor those parts in, inside us. We all have broken parts. So how can we work with that and bring the tools? You know, it's, it's, it's not a fake joy. It's allowing ourselves to feel and know, hey, I'm okay, no matter how broken I may be. And when I work on the friendship line, you know, when I talk to, to some people that are really broken, you know, when I share a sad part of me, oh my God, she's like, she shows up in a huge way of service to me. Like it shows her that she's not alone. You mean you felt that? Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful interconnectedness, isn't it? And I think one thing yeah. that's just one thing that's just come to me is, you know, when we think about music and when we think about poetry, a lot of the most beautiful songs have come from a place of deep pain, of grief, of of almost suffering. And the same with poetry; they often come when we're we're dealing with with a loss of some sort. But I kind of often find in the photography world, people will on, not only, but a lot of people will only, only head out when they're feeling it, when they're kind of in the mood, when the light's right, when the weather's right. But if we could revert people to think a little bit more about, it doesn't matter yes. how you're feeling. And actually, when you're going through that deepest, darkest times in your life, it's possibly more critical for you to get out in those moments because you can almost work through your emotions and release what's going on by being out there with your camera. We don't always have to see it as like a, a fun hobby. We can actually see it as that, as the same way that musicians and, and poets see, see their craft. Absolutely. I'm a devotee of David White. Uh, he's a poet. And he, he talks about those deep, dark places and says, it's all an invitation. It's all an invitation. And are you going to answer the call? And wow, that, that was really an eye opener. You know, we don't have to stay in and hide under the covers, you know, go outside. And if it's a dark day, that's okay, you know. Have that camera right there. Have the phone handy, which everyone carries their phone. Um, and just walk and just see and just look. And yeah, nature is quite healing, just being in the essence of that. And I'm so grateful that there are trees on my block here in San Francisco. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's it's lovely that, that you have that. And I love there that you say, you know, about the healing of nature and just being out there in its essence and taking your camera with you no matter what. And yeah, I don't, I don't know if you find it as well, but when you're in some of the, the hardest places, just going out for a walk and then being able to, to connect with that nature, often things just, just come to you. It's It's incredible. It's like it's like there's just there's signs that nature gives us all the time and when we can connect that with photography it's that that healing element definitely comes in and it, it's hard isn't it to, to get out the house when we're not feeling great and when we are suffering and grieving and sometimes we do need to retreat sometimes it is important to rest and rejuvenate but in those moments that we can find the strength to head out there and 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 connect with that that natural world that just it definitely helps. It certainly helps. And your story and, and what you've shared today has, I hope, been of, of great inspiration to Thank anybody you. who's listening that is, is going through a tough time just now, showing them that there is a potential outlet for those who are already interested in photography, which is everybody who's listening to this podcast, you know, if they're having a tough day, you know, going out with your camera could could give you a release, give you a connection, give you some signs, some healing that you otherwise wouldn't have if you were, were staying at home, which is... It's nice to be to make people consciously aware of that or, or remind them of that, should I say, um, because sometimes we forget that, don't we? Absolutely. I mean, I when I moved to San Francisco, you know, everybody was like, OK, we'll be prepared for the fog. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to not like the fog. To me, the fog is mystical. You know, it's alluring. 
It's like, oh my gosh, the fog. And I remember a friend of mine said, you're going to go out and shoot tomorrow, aren't you? It's supposed to be the, the heaviest fog day. I went, oh my God. So I went out to Land's Inn near the ocean and I was immersed around these amazing cypress trees and took some of my best images. And then recently I read New York Times that redwoods get one third their nourishment from the fog. And the fog is disappearing. I don't hear the fog horn nearly as much as I used to. And I'm like, oh my God, wow. I'm going to really step up my love of the fog even more so. <laughs> but I love being in the mystery and the unknown. You know, I mm -hmm. think that's part of, I think that's an allure of photography for me too. You know, it's all unknown. It's, it's what can we create? Wow. It's magic. I mean, I, I grew up in the dark room and seeing the images appear, and I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. And now look what we have to create. We're so lucky. Lots it's of endless. Endless. So endless. endless. It's, I just you hearing there speaking about the fog as well. It's like having that appreciation and gratitude for what we do have and for every moment in, in nature. And it's what what we perceive as its good and bad sides. You know, there's stories and opportunities in, in it all. And you becoming aware of the fog and it becoming less shows that your connection to photography and nature is making you aware of other things that are going on around you and giving you that connection to it as well, which is it's beautiful. I think that's, I feel that's what we're lacking. A lot of people are lacking is that connection, not just connection to others, but that connection to nature, that connection to themselves. And going back to what we'd said earlier, you know, when you can learn to reconnect with yourself, understand yourself, have that self-compassion and love for yourself, it, it ripples out. And it's, it's, it's interesting just to see how much your life almost changes when we learn to embody those things, which are often take a lot of time and dedication and work to get there. But it's when you start to see those changes and that connection, it's so beautiful. And if photography can give us the opportunity to, to give us that connection for those that are interested in it and give us that self-exploration, then it's it's well worth delving into. So I just want to say so thank so much gratitude and thanks for your time today, Susie. It's been so eye-opening speaking to you. And there's so much overlap, I feel, of of what you've said and what I'm feeling. It's been a real privilege to to speak with you and, and an honor that that we were put in touch just over a simple email, which is is so beautiful to be connected Absolutely. in that way. So. Thank you, Kim. And I, I bravo to you for for doing these this podcast. I, I loved listening to it and um it ripples out there, like you said. Mm. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. For anybody that's so really you. resonated with your, oh, you're welcome. Um, for anybody that's really resonated with with your story today, is there, um, where can people go if they'd like to to connect with you? Uh, I have a website, Susie with a Z, Beeler Photography, um, B I E H L E R Photography dot com, or I'm on Instagram, uh, Susie Beeler underscore Photography. Brilliant, so, and I'll put a uh, link to to all okay. of that in, in the show notes below. So if anyone would like to connect with you or follow your work further, they can they can do so. Um, I could Love literally it. speak to you for for hours, Susie. This has been amazing. And your, your knowledge, your depth of experience and everything you're doing in the world, I think is just phenomenal. And I hope that some people listening to this have either been inspired in their own lives or maybe even been inspired to be of service to others by doing something similar. Um, yeah, the more of us that speak about this, I think the, the better. So it's brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kim. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this week's podcast. It really does mean the world to me. And now that this podcast has come to an end, there's only one thing left for you to do. It's time to pick up your camera and head outdoors. There's so many incredible photographic opportunities just waiting for you to discover.